psychology. It's, it's the scientific study of our thoughts and our feelings and, and, and behaviors. And these are topics that, that resonate with us in a variety of different ways. They can be applied to, to our relationships, to our work life, to, to so much that occurs through us uh, for us throughout the, throughout the lifespan and really contributes so much to, to, to what it means to be, to be human, right? And this is, this is important stuff. So I, I teach a variety of different courses for the, for the department. So I teach uh, intro uh, to psychology. So it's possible that uh, some of you may be in my class. I also teach a, a first year seminar called the psychology of, uh, of success. And I teach sports psychology and a variety of uh, other classes. But again, what binds all of those classes together and all of the classes and, and activities in our research labs is this concern about our thoughts and feelings and behaviors. And certainly no one knows more about uh, the focus of psychology than uh, our, our student today, Natalie, who very much has made the most of her program. So I'll, Natalie, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, um, so I'm Natalie and I'm currently in the developmental psych program here at Carleton. Great, and so developmental psychology is, is one of the key research areas in our department, along with cognitive psychology and forensic and, and organizational, and we also have personality and, and social and, de and uh, developmental as well. So, so Natalie, what made you choose Carleton in the first place? I mean, you had so many options open to you. What was it about Carleton? Yeah, so I think I chose Carleton just because I saw that it had a lot of opportunities that not all the schools that I was looking at had to offer. I was pretty shocked when I found out that Carleton was the only school that I actually applied to with a co-op opportunity, which is very important to me. Um, and then, of course, um, there are many other in Ontario that have this opportunity, but since I'm from Ottawa, I didn't want to venture too far away from home. And a lot of my friends and family were already in the psychology program or neuroscience and mental health. And they told me all about how the profs in this program are so amazing. And throughout the years, I've gotten the chance to see that that's absolutely correct. Um, the profs in the social sciences faculty are really spectacular. They really step up to the plate, especially during the pandemic, and they truly cared about our mental health. Um, I've been doing a lot of pondering here at the end of my degree, and I've realized I have absolutely no regrets in coming here and I've had an amazing time. You, you really highlighted a number of, of important pieces there. First, you mentioned mentioned co-op. Could you talk a little bit about, about your placement and, and where were you in terms of your co-op placement? So funny enough, I didn't actually end up getting the grades for the co-op opportunity, which is a lot more common than I think students really realize. So I am kind of looking at opportunities elsewhere outside in the real world where I can gain that experience. And I think it's important for students to know that Co-op, if you don't get in, it's not the end of the world and you're still going to get the most out of your degree doing your like your thesis or your honors project and yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that because there are so many ways for students to gain experience and in our department, we believe that you learn by doing and co-op mm -hmm. is just one of those ways. We have so many other ways, including a, a third year practicum course where you'll be volunteering in the community and earning course credit along the way. We also have a, a, so many courses that emphasize experiential learning and the opportunity once again to, to learn by, uh, by doing and engage with the, with the community and, and reflect on material in, the, in so many different, uh, different important ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. So you've had a lot of experiences across your degree program. You've had highs, you've had lows. Tell us about, about your proudest moment. Hmm. Uh, very similar to Kirsten, I think one of my proudest moments was after I finished my first year. So heading into second year, I had a pretty high GPA and that wasn't something I really thought I could achieve, especially considering how people discuss all the time about how the transition from high school to university is so difficult and how your grades are going to drop. So I really took that and used it as motivation to really push myself forward in my degree. And that's how I ended up here as a ambassador for my program, which I think is very exciting, and I get to be a part of special things like this. Nice, right. That's that's wonderful. Now you've also had an opportunity to take so many different courses, and there are going to be some of those courses that that just hit certain notes for you, right? You, you really really enjoyed them more than others. What was your favorite course along the way? Hmm. My favorite course actually had nothing to do with psychology, but kind of intertwines with a lot of things. 
So Critical Introduction to Sexuality Studies is a second year course with Dan Irving and explores how heteronormativity is the center of a lot of our biases in the world. So for those who are listening who might not know, heteronormativity is basically the term for how heterosexuality is viewed to be the normal and preferred way of living. Um, and it discusses in great detail about how it's connected to things such as capitalism, colonialism, sexism, and all that jazz. Um, and I think it helped me be more critical and have different perspectives in my other courses, which I then can make that connection and think about how we in a Western society truly are very privileged. And then I took all of that knowledge specifically and applied it to my favorite psych course, which was Adolescence and Emerging Adulthood. Um, it's really cool to take courses that kind of relate to you because you can look at the textbook and the PowerPoints and be like, hey, like I recognize recognize that within myself like it's really cool that I get to see my own self in what I'm learning um, and you get to really see how relationships identity and worldviews are really formed through our experiences and this is a common theme throughout your psychology major all right so that, that's wonderful now you, you've been returning back to developmental psychology a, a few times what is it about developmental psych that really attracted your attention I honestly have always just really been interested in how our brain actually develops like from childhood into adulthood because there's so many different like stages that we go through in life and it's as like an outsider looking in you can kind of see like kind of what's on the surface how we develop but then in the developmental psych program you really get to dive deep and look into the different functions of the brain and how we interact with each other and it's just a lot more profound than you might think it would be. Right, sure, well, that's great. So along the way, uh, you've been acquiring and refining all kinds of different skills and some of these have been based on, you know, the courses that you're taking, the experiences that you've had on campus, the experiences you're having off campus. So uh, what are some of the skills that you've been developing uh, in your years at Carleton? Uh, specifically throughout my psych degree, I've learned how to be a more conscious human being and also be more critical of difficult situations and be more involved with the issues that are happening around us. So I found within the program, it allowed me to explore in a lot of different domains, which you talked about earlier. Um, I've had the opportunity to take classes such as sexuality studies, indigenous studies, human rights, and even American Sign Language. And you don't really realize how many of these subjects are actually intertwined and it forces you to kind of think more critically about how you're interacting with others and how you may have an effect on them. And then generally I also learned that psychology is a lot more intense than I thought it would be coming out of uh, high school. You're basically becoming a doctor of the brain. So I learned the hard way that it's really beneficial to interact with your profs and go to their office hours because at the end of the day, we know that you guys are there and you're on our team and you really want us to succeed. Well, that's good of you to, to, to say it. I, I certainly think that that uh, at Carleton, we we think of it as as a community, really. I mean, it, it has a bit of a small town feel to it, which uh, that's one of the reasons why I've, I've stayed. You know, if I was an undergrad student and grad student at Carleton and ultimately made it my, my, my work home as well, in part because of that feeling of community. Yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, no, that's good. So. At this point in your, your program, you're really starting to think about next steps, right? So what what's coming next for you? Where's your degree going to take you? And what are you, what are you up to now in terms of trying to get ready to, to make those transitions to the to the world of work? Honestly, I've really thought long and hard about this question and I don't have any solid plans. Like I know where I want to go and I know where I want to end up. But I've learned this year that with everything that's happening around us that you really don't know where life is going to take you. Uh, so in general, I'd really like to go for a graduate program in child psychology. And it's also very important to me that I go out and see the world. So I'm thinking that I'm probably going to start somewhere fresh and then take my master's and maybe a PhD. Um, I know that I really want to help children in their mental health and maybe look at advocacy in underrepresented communities. Um, I've worked with a lot of children over the years and I know I have a solid passion for them. So I think that's where I'm going to end up. Um, and I think it's really also really important for people to know that it's okay to not know what you want to do and take a break from academia because burnout is so real and you really want to keep your passion. So that's the mindset that I'm keeping. And I just know that I'm going to achieve my goals and that everybody who's watching is going to achieve theirs as well. You make so many good points there. I, I love the, the the idea that you don't have to have everything figured out on day one, right? I, I, I think yeah. We so often think that everyone else has it figured out, uh, but they but chances are they don't. And and so much of our 
of our of our journey involves key conversations and courses and experiences and all of these sorts of things that that help us to determine where we fit. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much for taking the time to to visit with us uh, today. You're certainly you've been making the most of your your university experience. Thanks for chatting with me. It was great.